Good evening, everybody, and welcome all of you to this live program at All the Big Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Dr. Marco Guidi from Zurich, Switzerland. Dr. Guidi is currently senior consultant in hand surgery at the university hospitals at Zurich in Switzerland. After completing his residency at the University of Rome, La Sapanzia, he pursued the European Diploma in Hand Surgery affiliated to the Federation of European Society for Surgery Hand. He subsequently pursued fellowships across several centers in US and Europe, some of which include a fellowship in hand surgery at Strasbourg, France, another fellowship in Spain with Dr. Francisco Pinal, a fellowship at the hospital La Carita in Locarno, Switzerland. So today it's my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Marco Guidi from Switzerland. Over to you, Marco. Thank you very much for the invitation. So today I would like to introduce you or some few um, of the person that are, uh, are not experienced in this technique uh, to the intramedullary fixation of the metacarpal and phalanger fracture. And this, is, this would be a guide to survive. So is plate fixation really the past? So, um, right now, we have a lot of publication in, uh, in the new osteosynthesis system, so in the new endomedullary system, but I don't think that it's over the era, so the, the time of the plate fixation. And why I think is the indication. So we need to take care of the indication of each fracture. But why a different internal fixation? So the main complication of the plate fixation is stiffness and we know that there is a, a problem uh, of, of the gliding uh, situation between the tendon and the plate and we can have some scarring and some adhesion. In a lot of reports uh, we have uh, uh, a major problem especially for the, the phalangeal fracture uh, in major extension lag or stiffness but as well in metacarpal fracture. This study from Page was a little bit old, it was 1998, and probably as well the profile of the, of the plate were different. And right now we have low profile plate, we have different company that produce a very good plate system. Uh, but as well, other paper, they are reporting uh, stiffness, especially in proximal phalanx, in open fracture, treated with uh, plate fixation. So that's why we are just opening a new uh, door to the intramedullary screws that can really help us to reduce this complication. The very first report that we have, it's in 2010. It was by Bolton. It was in Journal of Surgeon American where they published a case report of a comminuted subcapital metacarpal fracture with good results. But then everything exploded uh, after uh, Francisco de Pinal from Santander published his results of the mini invasive fixation of this fracture with very, very good results. So this is just to let you understand what's going on in the literature. If you see uh, in the last 10 years, how many publications were, uh, were made about this, uh, this area you can really understand why there is a, a huge pressure. If you look at the metacarpal fracture fixed with this in, intramedullary screw, you have 85 results in 10 years. For the phalanx, you have 36 results. Our team uh, in, uh, in Zurich, in Switzerland, is very active on this, uh, on this area. We're just doing biomechanical studies uh, and clinical studies, and we report very good results. For this reason, we were invited for the effort to make um, an instructional lecture and uh, um, we use 3D pictures to let our residents and um, as well other sergeants to understand better uh, how, a good way to perform this procedure. So when we have to use this fixation is it really useful for every single fracture no it's not so for the oblique fracture long oblique it's not very indicated as well for the spiral fracture and as well for the very proximal and very distal fracture the reason is that we don't have a lot of bone stock where the 
the screw can stabilize the bone. But if you see, I left the multifragmentary fracture, and you will see why it's possible to, to make some fixation. Not in all cases, but in, in some of them, it's, uh, it's useful. So what we use is a screw from the Medartis company. It's a spit tip CCL screw. It's self-perforating and self-taping. Um, normally we use 2.2 millimeter diameter and 3.0 millimeter diameter. Right now in the market, there is even the 1.0 millimeter, most of all for the small phalanx. So I just divided um, my lecture in three parts. The first part will be on the metacarpal fracture, then in the proximal fracture, uh, the proximal phalanx, and then the middle phalanx. So always remember, very useful, just measure the length of the fracture or of the, of the metacarpal as well, because we don't have um, all length of screws. For um, this firma, this company, we have only 40 millimeter screws. That's why in, uh, in adults and as well in men, sometimes we don't have the right length and we need to sink the screw uh, down deep the metacarpal head. Then please always check even the lateral view Otherwise, you're gonna you're you're not gonna have a very um, a very good measure of the endometalloid canal. For the metacarpal, and normally we use a 3.0 millimeter CCS screw. So what we do, we do a little uh, reduction. We can use a just maneuver to make a reposition of the fracture. Then we do a little incision over the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And then with a K wire, we can go through the metacarpal head, especially in the dorsal part, otherwise you're going outside. So you need to keep the, the dorsal part of the entry point, like this you're gonna reach directly the endomedullary uh, canal. And then you can put a cannulated uh, CCS screw or a cannulated screw, airbed screw or whatever you want, and you can make, um, a stabilization of the fracture. Um, if you see the fracture, sometimes it's at the level of the ismus. That's why our advice is just to go beyond the ismus. Sometimes it's not possible with this length. That's why, as I told you, you need just to screw up a little bit, uh, a little bit more, the screw down deep the metacarpal head. In a uh, comminuted fracture, we have something uh, more to report, and this was uh, a very nice publication from uh, Dr. Francisco del Pignan, and it was something from the architecture. So every structure that is in a um, Y structure, so a triangular structure, has a better stability. And that's why it used, in this case, is two screws, uh, normally a 3.0 and a 2.2 millimeter screws, to make a better stabilization of this fracture. For the proximal phalanx, we have uh, something different. So um, normally you need always to measure the, the diameter of the canal. We use sometimes the three millimeter, but most of all the 2.2 millimeter. And what we do is just to try to sublux you can even try to yourself, we can try to sublux the metacarpal phalangeal joint dorsally just to get to the basis of the proximal phalanx. Sometimes this is not possible. That's why we need to use another technique. So this is a transarticular anterograde technique. We go through the metacarpal head with a K wire, then we go through the, the basis of the proximal phalanx, and then we can reach the fracture. Then we can put the cannulated screw and then we can uh, stabilize the fracture. There is a drawback in this technique, so we can uh, develop um, double injury, uh, an injury of the uh, articular uh, surface of the metacarpal head, and then a chondral damage in the proximal phalanx. Then we have a retrograde intraarticular technique, and this is very reliable, very quick, and this is a very useful, I can advise you, um, in some uh, some uh, fracture that we can find in end surgery 
very, very, very frequently. And you need just to flex the fingers, so flex the PIP joint, just put the wire and just put the, the screws. Normally, you, uh, we advise always to make a little incision and um, um, the, the, the procedure will take five minutes time. Um, of course, we need to report this. If we go from a retrograde uh, direction, the surface of the phalanx, of the, the head of the phalanx, is, is less than the proximal base. That's why the amount of chondral damage will be higher. So we need to take care of this as well. And then here, you can even have some risk of central slip injury. What about the middle phalanx? We can have an anterograde exarticular technique, and this is feasible because we just go from one side of the finger, we can insert the, the wire and then stabilize the fracture. Sometimes you can have some um, uh, slight displacement of the fracture, but uh, actually, uh, if the fracture is, is just a transverse fracture, is a good indication as well, and you don't injure the, the cartilage surface. Then you have a retrograde intraarticular technique where you can bend the distal uh, interphalangeal joint, put the, the wire, and just uh, put the cannulated screw, and then game over. Um, you have a risk of tendon, uh, extensive tendon injury, and normally we use 2.2 uh, millimeter, or sometimes in, uh, in women we use 1.7 millimeter screw. And this is uh, uh, what I told you before. We can even use uh, this technique in comminuted fracture when you have some um, soft tissue injury and when a plate is not possible or it's not indicated because otherwise you could have an exposure of your, of your um, material of the synthesis. And this is the results. One of the most important critics of this uh, osteosynthesis is the rotatory instability. There is no, there is no uh, great stiffness of the, of the implant. That's why we advise always to put a body taping, uh, especially for the first six weeks time, just to protect. And this will protect as well the rotatory uh, problems of the finger and uh, um, as well the results of the osteosynthesis. This is even a commutative fracture, and I used um, lax screw technique plus uh, this um, uh, intramedullary screw. The reason it was just uh, pushing a little bit the, the limit and to be um, really mini invasive. And I think the, the most important reason for this is to reduce the edema of the finger. And this will allow a very quick and faster rehabilitation. Uh, we have a very strong um, um, experience here in the occupational therapy. Uh, for the insurance system, every single patient has uh, um, hand physiotherapy, so we call hand therapy after the operation. And um, they, they have really, they improved uh, um, their uh, treatment as well with this uh, osteosynthesis. We can always, uh, we can even use uh, this uh, technique for intraarticular fracture. If you see there was an intraarticular fracture of the metacarpal head, there was a reduction of 1K wire, and then with the um, screw, we, we could achieve a very good reduction and um, stability that was enough for um, uh, a good range of movement after the operation. Which are the complications? So we can always have some screw protrusion, screw breakage, more rotation, it's possible. As I told you, rotatory instability and length loss. This is possible. So you need to take care. You need to um, just see the patient, inform the patient that uh, they don't have to weight bear, so have some um, weight bearing over the hand. They can move, but they don't have to uh, force the movements. Uh, the possibility protocol normally is a, um, a mobilization, uh, um, self-mobilization or with a hand therapy. 
and uh, we we put a splint during the night just for protection and um, we perform an x-ray control in six weeks in our clinics and normally the patient uh, can go back at eight weeks uh, time to uh, manual activity normally for uh, office activity they can in the, the week the week after they can go back or even before i'm just uh, uh, reported here some uh, some studies these were the, the first group of, uh, of articles that reported on uh, uh, clinical results and all of, the, of, of these um, articles um, had a very good uh, range of movement after the operation uh, and with a quick recovery and quick healing. Um, we have several uh, paper as I told you but I, uh, I choose this systematic review just to let you understand um, the results in the 900, so 958 fracture, the mean uh, surgery duration was uh, 26 uh, minutes. It was, uh, I think it was even some learning curve. So the range was between five and 60 minutes. The healing time was in between uh, uh, five and six weeks. And the complication rate was 3.2%. The most frequent um, uh, reported complication was a lack extension in 2% of the cases. That's why I told you we, we can injure the tendon in some level. Uh, a lot of people just try to understand if this is a feasible technique because we injured a, a normal joint just to uh, take care of a fracture. And this was a study from Tenberg and um, they reported for the 2.4 millimeter screw from another company, 4% uh, of control damage in the metacarpal head. And for the 3.0 millimeter screw, there was reported a 5% of um, control loss. So it's a relatively low surface. As well, the study from our team from Borbas um, reported a cartilage damage between 4 and 80%. And it was, this was as well confirmed from this uh, new study from last year. And so the, the control damage is between 7% and 9% for the metacarpa and between the 4% and 8% for the phalanx. What about the risk of osteoarthritis? This is a good question. So um, normally large defect can uh, lead to osteoarthritis. This is uh, well known. We don't know which is the size of joint effect that will bring to a, um, a quicker uh, osteoarthritis. But up to now, there are no clinical uh, results uh, with a long term uh, to, to report this, uh, this problematic. What about tendon injury? So uh, this study from last year reported then with a mini open approach, so with a little incision, a little bit um, longer, so less than one centimeter, uh, this colleague um, had significant less extensor tendon damage uh, in the cadaver that they studied compared with the percutaneous approach. And they didn't find a um, significant difference between the proximal and middle phalanx for the retrograde insertion of the screw for tendon damage. And uh, for the middle phalanx, they didn't find any uh, difference between the retrograde and the anterograde screw fixation. So as I told you before, the contraindication are long oblique fracture or spiral fracture. Intraarticular comminution, it depends on the size of the fragment, but normally with a multifragmentary intraarticular fracture, this is not an indication. Open epiphysis, infection, and subchondral fracture are not good indication for this technique. I want just to report you something more. This is a new wave right now. Um, this was um, uh, from 2019. And there was a report from these eight authors. And to prevent um, con uh, control damage in the metacarpal phalangeal joint, they propose to make an anterograde intramedullary fixation. I think it's nice, but I, of course, we are just changing the point of damage. And the other problem is in case of um, problems or uh, screw breakage, uh, it would be difficult to remove it. 
In conclusion and take on message, I think this is a safe technique that can be really easy to perform. It's a fast operation, so it can lower as well your operative time. Uh, it's very good in replantation. It, it changes as well the time of replantation. Uh, it gives us enough stability to um, start with a um, early protective motion uh, protocol. It's good and respect as well the soft tissues. Gives uh, us the, the chance to have lower edema, so a better rehabilitation. But as I told you, it's not indicated for all fracture. So we can use it, but with the right indication. I thank you very much for, for this time and for this kind invitation. Thank you, Marco, for that brilliant talk of yours. Uh, and congratulations for all the research papers that you've published. Thank you very much. Thank you. A uh, couple of questions from our side. One is uh, regarding the cartilage damage that you, you've already mentioned about it. Now, what yes, is the significance of it going to be? Is it one is the long term issue, the risk of developing arthritis? What is what do you think is a short term? Do you think there could be some finger stiffness because of stunning of the art, neighboring articular cartilage? Because the size of the screw is quite big compared to the surface area, right? So it, it'll occupy, say, one third of the surface area of the articular cartilage. So do you yeah. think the neighboring cartilage also will get stunned? This is a good question. Actually, if you see the result of the patient, and uh, I mean, I, I've seen patients from three years uh, follow up, they are quite good. So probably if we damage the cartilage in, a, in, in the center, in the middle of the metacarpal head or in the middle of the head of the phalanx, maybe as well the, the surrounding cartilage and the surrounding bone can have as well some uh, uh, risk of to be so to be dead so to have a, a necrosis and this is real sometimes i had already uh, one complication in one patient uh, with a necrosis of, of the uh, proximal phalanx head so this is possible but in the majority of the patient this did not happen so i think we should just try to um, understand it. It, it this is a feasible technique and of course, uh, if we compare to K wire, of course, it's a little bit more expensive, but you can you can do just one operation and just remove it and just move the finger uh, with a very early um, protective protocol, protective motion protocol. I think this is the most important um, value. Then it's already it's as well the operation time that can be really important as well as. Uh, uh, as um, as cost for for the surgeon for the clinic. Thank you, Marco, for that. And you've already mentioned that patient selection is one of the most important uh, criteria, and you've mentioned the contraindications as well. Have you encountered any case of non-union and a necessary for I mean a necessity to remove the screws? And how difficult was it to remove the screw? So up to now, no non-union. So we didn't uh, we didn't have any pseudarthrosis. The problem, as you mentioned, could be the removal of a screw. So um, last week, uh, we had already in our clinics uh, a young guy that we have operated last year that he just had another boxer fracture in the previous fifth metacarpal bone that we already operated. So the screw was broken. So the question is what to do and what is acceptable. So if the, the inclination, so if the angle of the fracture is acceptable, so lower than 40 degrees, um, we can even use the screw inside that sometimes it's not broken, it's just bent to, to make like intramedullary fixation and that's it. But if it's broken and you need to uh, remove the screw, you have two different stuff to do. The first one, you have to open the joint and try to reach the cartilage damage of the uh, entry point. Just try with your um, uh, K-wire to find the entry point and then try to remove the screw. But it's not easy because uh, um, the, the thread of the screw are not allowing you because they are not, they're not continuous. And they're not allowing you to, to take 
out the screw itself. That's why you need to use uh, some pan or some other instrument to remove it. Otherwise, you need to go to the fracture side, just open it, and if the screw is inside and you have the fracture, you need to remove one first, one part of the screw, and then the second part. So it's a little bit technically tricky, demanding, but it's possible. Um, right now, we don't have any instrument to remove a screw. So if you put it, you need, to, you need to know that if you need to remove it in case of infection, you need to, 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 to do something more. Thank you, Marco, for that. And what do you think uh, the indications could include multiple fractures? Suppose there are multiple phalangeal and metacarpal fractures. Do you think uh, this is a superior technique? I think so. If, if we uh, think about the metacarpal fracture, compared to four plates, four screws are quite better. As I told you, for, for an injury, you're, you have already a compression, so a trauma and uh, a soft tissue damage. If you add a surgical injury, so uh, a iatrogenic injury to put the plates, you have some troubles more. But if you make a mini invasive surgery with this technique, uh, you can improve really your results. And I think this is the, in multiple fracture, this is a very, very good technique. Thank you, Marco. More, more important is, is we need just to control the rotation of the finger. That's, that's as well important. Thank you, Marco, for that. Just one last question before we wind up the session. Now, uh, can you explain the concept of the Y strutting? I was just looking into the paper published by Francisco Pinal, and he has uh, described a technique called as Y strutting concept for uh, a commuted uh, metacarpal or a phalangeal head fractures. Have you encountered that? Have you have had some experience when doing this Y strutting concept? I did less than five in my career. Um, I think sometimes you have the indication. Sometimes it's a bit, uh, it can be an overkilling. So because you, you are adding two holes in the, in the articular surface, um, it's stable. That's, I, I can tell you that that you can provide a better stability. But then you need to understand if then a plate is, is then indicated. Of course, um, a screw like this has a cost and probably two cannulated screws have a higher cost compared to a plate or to K wire. So you need just to, to, to play a little bit with what, you, what are your availability in your clinic, in your hospital, and understand if two screws are really indicated. But of course, it, this is a technique I tried by myself. It's reliable, but I didn't have a lot of cases. And sometimes I use a plate because it, it, it can be much more stable. And this is out the biomechanical study that they say that compared to the plates, you have less um, stiffness, but enough stability to move uh, uh, faster. Compared to the K-wire, the intramedullary screws are, are much more stable and much more stiff. Thank you, Marco. I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Thank you for a fantastic lecture. And I'm sure this is going to benefit a lot of people all over the world. Thank you so much Thank for joining. Thank you very much for your invitation and for your efforts in, uh, in teaching and in your, in your area, really. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.